So when it comes to the apartments already built, of course, some of them have problems. Viewers, in fact, from all over the metro message our newsroom daily, saying they're living through this heat wave without air conditioning because their landlords will not fix their units. So Griffin Rushton talked to a couple of them earlier this month, you'll recall. It's frustrating because we do pay rent, we pay the utilities, and, you know, we're having to outsource and buy different things and fans and things like that. Landlords need to do better, either lower the rent or fix the stuff. Like, it's getting ridiculous at this point and people are suffering. So Griffin joins us again. Have those women gotten their ACs fixed? Yeah, you know, I reached out to both of them today, and mm -hmm. they say both of their ACs have been fixed. And that Great. includes the woman who withheld a third of her rent, yeah. forcing her landlord to uh, fix her AC. Okay. Uh, it appears, obviously, that strategy paid off, but I would imagine that there are other tenants who are a little more apprehensive about going, you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe and, and wanting to hold money back from their landlords. Yeah, you know, New Mexico state law says landlords need to keep those appliances in working condition, and if they don't, law experts say that the tenants do have the right to challenge them. But some of the law professors at UNM I spoke with say that landlords have a lot of power right now, and that's yeah. pushing some tenants to not want to take that stand. But they also added tenants also have a lot of power in numbers. If you were to find a landlord who said, oh, the AC hasn't been working, so we're going to reduce everybody's rent, no questions asked, asked. that's a news story for you. UNM law professor Serge Martinez says it's not often tenants take a stand against their landlords and win. I've seen it happen, but it is, it's the exception rather than the rule. New Mexico state law allows renters to challenge their landlords if they don't provide a safe and healthy living space. It also says landlords are not allowed to retaliate against those renters. But Martina says that's not what really happens. The landlords say, if you abate your rent, I'm going to sue you for non-payment of rent, and we're going to work this out in court. Right? And that is a pretty effective threat. People don't want to deal with the legal system. People don't want to be under threat of eviction. They don't. And with the ongoing housing shortage, UNM law professor Allison Friedman says many renters know there's nowhere else to go. You know, tenants often end up walking away from the situation, and particularly because they need to secure future housing. She adds New Mexico's tenant laws don't protect renters enforcing their rights from having their leases terminated. That's different from eviction. But she says there are other ways to force the landlord's hand. Tenant organizing is a really awesome way for tenants to get together and sort of bring these issues to the forefront. That's exactly what organizers with the People's Housing Project are doing in Albuquerque. In any apartment complex and especially the larger ones, you'll usually find a community of tenants who have had it up to here with the um, lack of respect, the lack of maintenance, the lack of responsiveness, and so many other things. They say it usually only takes a group of three tenants to pressure landlords into making repairs, but more is always better. When it's like 10 tenants coming to the landlord and putting them on notice, then typically we see a flurry of maintenance come and fix many, many issues. But of course, they say the first step is always talking to your neighbors. Tenants don't know how much power they have until they really join with other tenants. There's definitely power in numbers. Now, if it sounds like they're suggesting tenants unionize, that, that's exactly the point here. The yeah. law professors I spoke with say that's a good way to look at this, but they do believe it's time for state lawmakers to step in here. And we mentioned New Mexico's tenant laws a, a few times throughout that report. How do they stack up compared to other places? Well, one of the professors I spoke with said they're actually pretty weak, and she believes mm -hmm. that state lawmakers should really just start from scratch here. But she says in any situation, she believes it's well past time that New Mexico require that all homes and apartments come with some type of cooling device, just like heating devices are required. Well, if this summer's any indication of it, yeah, that makes total sense. All right, Griffin, thanks.